In this video, we'll be looking at the trigger outputs on the monomer teletypes. That is, these four outputs. And how we can send triggers out that trigger operations in other modules in our case. So at first, let's quickly look at how to work with these outputs. The, the first command to learn is that we can toggle them. So right now, we can see that the LEDs are off. That means that nothing is going out right now. It's going to read as a zero voltage. But we can actually turn them on using the operand tr.talk for trigger toggle. You learn that a lot of these commands are abbreviated as much as possible. Some even have abbreviations that are so short that they don't really make sense anymore, but then there'll be a slightly longer one that you can use to make it a little bit more readable. And that's because the commands we can write on the teletype are limited by the screen width. So you cannot have any line that is longer than that, which means you want to try to be as brief as possible in everything you do. The trigger toggle takes the number of the triggers. So trigger number one, two, three, or four. So take that as a single parameter. If we just press enter here, you'll see that we now have the light lighting up on the first. We could light up the third one as well. I'll show you a little shortcut here. If you press arrow up on your keyboard, you can actually cycle through your previous commands. In this case, we get back up to the toggle we just did. So let's try to turn on the third as well. We can uh, turn off the first one again by toggling it once more. There you go. Now, the next thing you might want to know is what is the current state of it? You might need to write some code that says if this trigger is currently lit up, do something. If not, do something else. And the operand for that is just TR and then the trigger number you want. So let's see trigger one, zero. Let's see what's in trigger three. Oh, the space here. And we get one. Let's try toggling that. And then trying to read it again. And now we get a zero there as well. So, you might not have noticed, but one thing that happened here is actually part of what, to me, is the most confusing confusing about working with the teletype. And it's the fact that depending on how you use a command and depending on what the command is, sometimes commands will give you something out. So in this case, we saw that tr.tog1, or two for that matter, it does something, but it doesn't return any value. TR2 returns a value. And what you'll later see is that some commands can do both. Some commands can either set something to a value or read the value, all depending on how many parameters you've given it. Um, it's not a real problem, it's just something to be aware of that the world is not quite as simple as it might seem. So now we know how to see what the state of a trigger is, and we know how to set it to high or set it to low. Um, oh, actually, let me <laughs> let me just finish that thought there. So, tr1 that reads the state of it. What if we give it a second argument? tr1 1 that sets it to high. tr1 zero sets it to low. So what I was just talking about, the tr command is actually a good sample of. If you give tr one argument, it's ex expecting that to be the number of a trigger. It will read that and give you the value. If you give it a second argument, it expects the second argument to be a state that you want to set the trigger operand to. So something to be wary of and just kind of when you're reading code, be aware that a lot of things can either be read or can be saved uh, or stored. You can store value into it. Um, if 
feel like I didn't do that very well, but it will become a lot more apparent as we move along. So being able to set these triggers high or low is certainly useful, but what you really want to use triggers for often is to send out kind of a gate that triggers something else. And to do that, uh, we have a command called pulse. So tr.pulse, which is to send out a pulse on the trigger. It'll go high for a little while and then it'll go low again. So let's try to do that on trigger one. See the tiny blink. Now the question of uh, how long is it going to stay high? Well, there's another operand for that, tr.time, trigger time. So if we run that with just one argument, one, it's going to tell us how long trigger one is set to be uh, high, 100 milliseconds. If we give it a second argument, we can actually set it to where we want it to be. So let's say a thousand, thousand milliseconds a full second. So now if we try to pulse it again, it should stay lit for a bit longer. There we go. Let's set it back down to a hundred milliseconds. And then let's try to connect this and let's try to see if we can generate some sound. So I'm going to connect trigger one to the trigger input of the plunk. And then I'm going to take the sound output of plunk and I'm going to add it over here to this little mixer I have at the end. And finally, I'm going to take the output of this little mixer and put it into the output of my case. So now if we trigger the plunk, it should make a sound and we should hear it and hopefully I'm recording it correctly. So let's try that, tr.pulse1. There we go. Let's uh, switch this guy to a little more interesting sound. What should we do? Maybe a uh, clap is good. So, if we repeat our command, you get a pulse one, get a clap. Now, remember that I said that some commands have abbreviations. And if we look at this command, t out of pulse one, we are pretty much using maybe a, a third of the screen, if not more. But trigger pulse actually have a shorthand, which is just p. So, T out of P will do exactly the same thing. There are a few more tricks to what we can do with the triggers. Um, one of them is that we can change polarity on them. I'm not going to go into a lot of this right now, but if you're trying to use your teletype to do some really interesting gymnastics with a large um, rack setup, that might become important, being able to uh, be really granular about the voltages you send out. Uh, and we'll see when we go into the CV outputs that there's a lot of tools to help you uh, specify the voltages and do math with the voltages, both to keep them quantized to uh, musical keys, but also to do uh, neat tricks with them. I think I'm going to keep this at about this for now. Um, this feels like a good stopping point. Thank you for watching and as always, if you have anything you want me to dive deeper into or any topics you want me to do sooner rather than later, just leave me a comment.